thank everyone for joining today. And as well, I wanted to thank you, uh, Asaf Blasberg, for your time today. Thank that you. we'll have a very special, I'm calling it multi-dimensional presentation on purpose because Asaf is going to talk about the classic pieces that he plays. And then he is going to share a multimedia professionally recorded uh, video of that so that we actually get the better sound and quality rather than just streaming it through Zoom live. So again, I, I do wanna just thank everyone for coming on. I know it's very exciting times for everyone because that vaccine is truly in sight, but uh, we're going to enjoy some classic music today, some, some very classic pieces from Asaf Blasberg. And I'm just gonna share a little bit about him. Uh, he has performed truly uh, all around the world, special mm -hmm. events, concert halls, and he received a master's degree in piano for performance from the Juilliard School in New York. His bachelor's degree is, degree is from the Mann School of Music in New York. Um, his teachers included and include Jerome Lowenthal, Jerome Rose, Sarah Davis um, Elkner, I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, Lucille Straub. And he actually began playing at the age of four. At 10, he started to compose. At age 11, he had the honor of playing a commissioned work written by Richard Felciano for the Music Teachers Association of California. Um, and from there, he has clearly gone on for more uh, awards and competitions. Uh, he took first place at the Glendale. Uh, again, I apologize for all my pronunciation. That's okay. <laughs> uh, the Glendale McGaughy or McGaughy competition. Um, as well, in 1997, he was a semifinalist at the 1997 um, Naumburg International Piano Competition, prize winner of the International Keyboard Institute and Festival. Um, and, and many more awards. I am encouraging you to uh, check out his website and his biography. It's asafblasbergpianist.com right. uh, to learn more about the different places that, where he has graced the auditoriums and halls like uh, Carnegie Hall um, and many other places. So we're very fortunate to have you here today and I uh, appreciate that. So I'm going to give you the spotlight and you can uh, take on the rest of the show. So thank, thank you, you again. Thank you, Levy, and thank you uh, to everyone uh, for joining me uh, today. I'm really excited to share uh, my love of music with you. Um, I'm going to be uh, showing you today uh, three uh, pieces uh, that I uh, performed um, in, in my home. Um, and this was filmed uh, you know, with three cameras and great sound. So I'm really excited to share that with you. Um, the first piece is the Mozart Sonata uh, in C major. Uh, this is truly um, a beautiful piece of music uh, and I absolutely adore Mozart. Um, he is truly uh, an amazing composer and um, this piece um, has three movements. Um, it has a beautiful first movement. Uh, the second movement is very delicate and offers a huge contrast from the first. And finally, we have the third movement as well. Um, and um, Mozart is just, um, you know, the way that he writes music, um, it, it's genius. It really is. You know, the themes are fantastic. And um, it's, it's such deli delicate music, you know, and um, I'm delighted to share it with you. So I'm going to start the presentation with the Mozart Sonata in C major. Uh, and then after that, we will proceed to two other works, which I will uh, talk about later. So I hope you enjoy this and I will uh, go ahead and share my video screen with you. So this will just take a couple seconds um, and um, we should begin uh, that performance shortly. Um, just give me one second to get this going for you. A moment. Okay. Now we'll just rewind this and We'll share the screen and hold on one second and okay. And we should be able to get this going. Okay. Let's uh, here.
Okay, so that was the Mozart Sonata in C major. I hope you enjoyed that performance. Uh, the next piece on the program will be the Chopin Heroic Polonaise in A flat major. Uh, this is a very popular work, and um, I'm sure some of you maybe heard some of the themes in this next piece before, but um, it is a very beautiful piece, and um, it has a very, very nice theme. And it does get quite exciting towards, uh, towards the end of the piece. And so um, it, it truly is a remarkable work. And um, Chopin does offer a lot of beautiful music. There's a lot of dances um, that he also wrote. And so I hope you enjoyed this piece. I'm going to cue it up right now for you um, in just a few minutes. Here we go.
well, that was a very exciting ending to a very exciting work. Um, the final piece on tonight's program is a lovely short piece by Johannes Brahms. Now, Brahms wrote a huge amount of repertoire, both uh, for piano solo, he also wrote symphonies, uh, he wrote chamber music, um, he wrote for the violin, and um, his music is very orchestral. Even when he writes for the piano, um, you know, when you listen to the music, it really does sound orchestral with uh, the range of notes that he uses uh, in the register of the piano. Uh, this piece is a very uh, quiet piece. Um, it's very elegant and has an absolutely beautiful theme. And so I hope you enjoy this work by Johannes Brahms. And I will cue it up right now. Thank you. 
ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching uh, these performances and um, I'm open to questions or comments. Thank you. And I also unmuted everyone's microphone. So if you do have a question about another piece, possibly, I know that Asaf's not in front of a piano to sort of show something for you, but um, you, you are talking to an expert on classical music from studying it and from playing it. So that was a great opportunity. If there's a, a piece or an inspiration you want to know behind something that Asaf might be able to share, definitely uh, speak up. Alan, did you have a question? I see you're about to unmute. Hold on, you're you're still muted though. Unmute. Okay. Do you have any students? And also, how long did it take you to memorize all that? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Um, yes. Yeah, so I do have a few uh, students. Um, of course, before the pandemic, and then afterwards, I did have to go. Uh, and switch to uh, a remote, uh, you know, session, obviously. But but to be honest, it's it's you know it's not the same experience because when you teach piano, you really have to have that in-person experience. You have to demonstrate. You have to, you know, really listen, um, you know, to the student. And um, and so I think um, at this point, I'm waiting, you know, until you know we all get over this safely. Uh, in terms of memorizing the pieces. Um, so these pieces were uh, works that I actually learned many, many years ago. Um, and so I did have to bring them back. So I would say for the Mozart Sonata, when I first learned it, um, I probably memorized that in about a week. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and that's the thing, you know, when you're a, when you're a concert pianist, I mean, um, you know, you really are supposed to memorize the works. I mean, that's really the standard. Um, and it's easier to memorize it because if you don't, you have to constantly look at the score and then look at the keys and then look at the score, you know? So it's just better to, to memorize it. And, um, you know, being a concert pianist, I mean, it does take a lot of practice, lots, hours and hours and hours of practice. Mm -hmm. And when you perform in front of an audience, you know, you really only have one shot to get it right. <laughs> You know, there's no coming back. There's no editing. It's done straight. Um, and that's part of the joy of, of playing music in front of an audience. Um, when I was uh, a student at the Juilliard School, I mean, there were people practicing eight, 10 hours a day, you know, and, and the school really focused on, on performance. You know, I think that was something very important. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, Charlie, did you have a question? Charlie? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, I'm sure you've never heard of him, but have you ever heard of a Larry Weiner who uh, uh, did, he did marching bands, he did the, uh, the, the piece for the uh, 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 anniversary of, uh, the, of Texas, he wrote the, uh, the theme music for the uh, the Centennial of Texas. It, that yeah. name doesn't ring a bell specifically, um, but I am obviously aware of this music, you know, that you're mentioning. Uh, but I haven't heard of, of that name, unfortunately. Okay. I'm just wondering. He was a roommate of mine in college. Okay. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie taught him everything. Wonderful. Everything he knows. I right. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? I know that uh, it was really beautiful. There's some, I got some private messages in the chat. Paula, you have a question? Yes. And some you ever, have you ever thought of getting together some short, very short, I taught preschoolers, little kids, and I wanted them to be exposed to different types of music. Yeah. And I wanted them to, some music, how it makes you feel silly, some makes you sad, some makes you feel like marching. Just short little clips. And if you've ever had that, where can I get it? You know, that's a good question. Um, I'm not really sure. I know that, I mean, obviously, if you go on YouTube, you can find a huge amount of, of music. You just have to search for it. Um, so it's something you're going to have to kind of search for, you know, if you're looking for specific kind of music. Um, but I would certainly try YouTube. You know, and I would search in the address bar, you know, something specific um, 
you know, the, the, the search terms are what's important, you know, um, I, that might get is you there right a question. Is there a specific piece that you recommend? Uh, you're looking for a specific mood, Paula? Or I'm sorry, who was the person? Yeah, it was Paula, it was Paula. I, I would, and YouTube didn't exist when I was teaching, sorry. Okay, <laughs> no, sure, sure. So I had to get actual music, but looking for things was silly, like a clown. You feel like a clown. Sad music, uh, marching music, uh, waving music, just all different feels. And then I used to do experiments with the kids and play uh -huh. that music while we did art to see how it infects artwork. Right, right. So your question is, you're trying to look for that specific music, or or is there any music that I specifically performed? Um, well, the piece you performed, I mean, that has a lot of, you know, definite beats and things, but, right. you know. Right, like, like the uh, heroic polonaise, where you have all that crazy stuff in the left hand, and you get that excitement. Yeah, look, I mean, there's a lot of music. Well, you know, I think, for example, um, I played in one of my previous uh, webcasts, um, there is a piece uh, that Mozart wrote, which is based on the very famous theme, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Mm -hmm. And that's a fantastic work for kids. Uh, what I could do, Levy, is I could perhaps um, put it in the chat box. And yeah. then, pa Paula, you can, you can copy the link and, and you can mm -hmm. just play that piece of music for them. Because that, that's, that's a perfect uh, piece for kids. Because everybody knows the theme. And that's why I played it. Uh, in that previous concert, so I'll be happy, uh, you know, to put that in the, um, you know, in the chat or later, Levy, if you'd like, I can send you the the, the link. Sure. Or, Whichever or, one. Sure. So, Paula, I would I would start with that, and then the other thing for a contrast, because you were asking me, is there anything like a maybe like a darker mood? Um, well, there is the Moonlight Sonata of Beethoven, mm -hmm. which yeah. is a very yeah. famous yeah. work, which which has you know a really dark theme. It's very well known. I mean. I know a lot of, you know, my friends who, you know, played the piano, you know, for fun when they were kids, you know, their teachers taught them that piece. So those are two excellent uh, suggestions. An another question that I have in Chicago, every on Mozart's, on Beethoven's birthday, they yeah. used to play a tribute. Happy birthday, Beethoven. Have you ever heard of it? And where can I find that now where they played happy birthday in every one of his songs in his pieces. Yeah. No, that's an excellent question. I know there are a lot of organizations uh, throughout the country that have, I mean, not only the birthday piece, but they, you know, in celebration of Beethoven's 250th anniversary, um, they play lots and lots of Beethoven music. Um, and there are tons and tons of organizations. I can probably um, do a little bit of digging for you and find some links that could in that direction. I don't obviously have it on the top of my head, but but you are correct that but a the, lot of it. What they what played though was the tune Happy Birthday, but they played it for each one of his fair everything. Okay. In the, okay. In the method of Happy Birthday. So it was 20 different yes. versions of Happy Birthday yes, in Beethoven's I, music. Right. Yes. Yeah, I think you can. Oh, and another great place to find that again would be YouTube. Because any, I tried. It, I can't find it. You didn't it. find anything? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, probably have to do a little bit more digging to find that, but I, I'm sure um, with Google search, we can, we can definitely help you get okay, that. Okay, great, thank yeah, you. My pleasure. All right, and I see, uh, Ellen, did you have another question? Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead, David, you ask. Yeah. This oh, is David. Ellen's husband. Perfect. David. Hello. There you go. Hi, David. Hi. Uh, uh, just a comment. Ellen and I went to Poland. It was three years ago. Yeah. Yes. And we saw the Frederick Chopin Museum in Warsaw. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. Just a yeah. fantastic place. That's great. That's great. And they had his original and they, work. Uh, yeah, they had his original piano, I think, there. Wow. And in the basement, you could listen to a lot of his music over earphones. Yeah. Yes. That's including incredible. his famous funeral march. Of course. Of course. Yes. Which was, which was written in... Um, in one of his um, sonatas for piano is literally a movement of that piece. Um, yeah. I, can, yeah. I can even, I can send you a link of that um, if you'd like to hear that, but that, that's one of the most famous works. Yes, uh, I've personally never been to Poland, but I'm sure the experience was incredible. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> My pleasure, thank you.
Thank you. If there aren't any more questions, I wanted to thank Asaf again. This was really beautiful. And I know that uh, hopefully when you make it out to Phoenix for a concert, God willing, in person, yes, you'll make sure to let us know. And we'll make sure to pass that word along. So thank My, you. It was really thank beautiful. you, Lepi, so much for this opportunity. It was really wonderful to, to meet all of you. Thank you.